Hey, Real Green Ninja here. The video you're about to watch is a supplement to the existing tutorials and help videos already available on the Real Green website. I do take a more casual approach because I'm presenting this information as I would if you called in, although I may have a little fun with it. This video is based upon the information I, as a Real Green technician, would provide using my experience on the help desk. This video was created on my own time to assist with areas of the software that may be waiting for an official help video or tutorial. At the beginning of the training video, I will have the version of the service assistant the video was made with. I will also try to be as accurate as possible, but be aware, as service assistant updates are released, things may change. I'm using the name Real Green Ninja as not to stand out from the other amazing technicians that I work with. I hope the information in this video helps you, so grab a cup of coffee and I hope you learn something new. Hey, Real Green Ninja here. Today we're talking about setting up snow removal as a repeating special. So let's begin. So when we want to create a snow removal job, we're actually creating what's called a repeating special. That's where we're going out there and doing the same thing over and over and over again. So we're going to go to, well, again, data, product parameters, service program specials. I'm hoping you guys at least got that far already. So I don't have to keep saying it in every video. Um, and I'm going to create a new service. And I'm going to call it snow removal. Actually, I'll just call it SR and then snow removal. There we go. And we're going to give type S4 special job. Now, with snow removal, you're probably not going to leave something every time on site. So we probably don't have to worry about invoice message or um, you know things. But if you want to put a technician on there, you can say, yeah, watch out for cars or <laughs> watch out for you know um, curbs and stuff like that. But again, it's just something to remind your technician. But we do want to mark it as a special job. As well as for the pricing, again, pricing is up to you guys. If you guys want to do a man hour, if you want to do it by price table, again, that's entirely up to you. Um, I'm going to do it by man hour right now. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, when you uh, post production and it creates the next line of service, it's actually going to um, price the same one. So, again, if you have something like man hour in there, um, once you post production, it's going to, you know, adjust the man hour rate. Make sure you adjust that rate, you know. Um, if you do manual pricing, again, I'll put like 50 bucks in there. It's going to be 50 bucks for each one unless someone goes back in there and changes it. All right. Um, we're also going to, uh, also if you have any taxes, you know, if it's taxable, mark, tax, mark it taxable there. But we're also going to mark it as statement only because more than likely you're not going to get out of the truck on every visit and leave something at the person's property. You're going to send them out with, you know, what you might call a monthly invoice. And that's where um, you go through and say, okay, well, these are the 10 ones we did or whatever. Now, if it's a case where you guys are going to go through and say, you know what, it's $100 for us to plow your uh, parking lot, whether or not it snows, it's going to be 100 bucks a month. If we go out there once, if we go out there 100 times, it's going to be 100 bucks a month. That you might set up as an installment plan, and by setting up as an installment plan on the individual customer themselves, you're not actually charging the customer for the cost of the service, you're charging the customer off the base off a of payment schedule. So again, um, you, in that case, you probably do what's called an installment invoice and show those installments. Or those, those snow removals on that. Uh, max per year. Um, as far as max per year is concerned, you want to put at least you know a little bit of a higher number in there because you don't know how many times you're going out there. If I set some low, some low number like 10, as soon as it hit the 10th snow removal, it's going to mark itself as completed. Um, again, we're going to have the system build the services as they go along. Now, as far as automatic renew, that is up to you, okay, if you want to do that. But you probably want to have it fill in a auto renew date. And the reason why is because when you go and you're completely done with your snow removal and stuff like that, uh, for the next season, you're going to want to go do your um, do your uh, uh, renewals and stuff. You're probably going to go through under your process renewals and say, you know what, let's do our snow removal service and get down there doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. where is my snow removal so oh you know what for not service here there we go um oh you know i just realized i have to save it first hold on give me one second here all right so again we're going to leave that there. I'll come back to that. Special job. Now, as far as the unit of measure, again, you know, if you want to put something in there, you can, but you may not have it as a required size because, again, you're not necessarily pricing off of square footage because we're doing manual price. We're going to type something in there. We're also going to tell it to do it every day. And the reason why we want to do it every day, because, again, even though you might go out there two and three times, what this is telling the system is when you post production, build another job. Okay. And, again, it gives you a chance to pull it up. Now, if you want to put an end on date, maybe it's like April or something, you can do that as well. But again, keep in mind, when it hits that date, it's not going to schedule out any more services. Uh, once this is all done, just go ahead and hit, oh, I'm going to make it for non-service here, hit save. Now that's in there. Now, again, the reason why I was talking about having that renew date is because when you want to do your renewals, you're going to go to tools, process renewals, you can go through and say, you know what, oh, I want it to, oh, you know what, hold on, I'm going to close that. Man, I love my job, I love my job. Oh, wait, I'm not even getting paid for this. What am I talking about? Ha! Huh. And there we go. Okay, so you're going to say, I want to re renew all my snow removals that have a renewal date of from here to here. Okay, um, 
Again, this is a newer feature of the software. Uh, some of our techs are still learning, including myself. So if you need help, give us a call, um, and we'll help you try to figure it out. Um, again, the reason I added the non-service year stuff was for more for pest control companies, but I can see definitely how this is useful for snow removal. Okay, so now... Once we have all the you know the, the service created and so on and so forth, let's go ahead and add the service to some people. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to company. Uh, I'm just going to run a customer list here. I'm going to find all the people. Let's see here. Preview should be my Rochester people and stuff like that. Yeah, that should be it. Okay, there we go. All right. So now we're going to export those people out to the customer search screen. Click OK. Click OK. And then that way we have them on there. Now, again, I'm kind of jumping around just because I'm trying to do this kind of quick. Again, so this video does end up being like 15 hours long. Uh, but I'm going to go to my first person here. And I'm going to go and add that snow removal job to them. So I'm going to add a special job. I'm going to find that snow removal. There it is. And then I'm going to give it an active status because I do plan to go out. Again, you can put it in zero status if you want because you're marketing as opposed to actively doing it. But again, I'm just actively doing it. So let's say this person's 50 bucks. There we go. And then we're going to put our sold person in there because I think that's the other required field here. Save that. So now we have this job and we can actually go out and start doing it for this person. And I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple here. So I'm actually going to pause it just so that way you don't have to sit there for the five minutes or whatever and me going through and uh, adding this job to multiple people. So I'll be right back. And we're back. Well, for you guys, it was just a really short time for me. It was about 10 minutes. Okay, so if we go through and uh, go up and pull up our invoice screen here, uh, we go ahead and configure it. You're going to pull your snow removal invoices. And again, I just all I did while I was on the break is, or well, when you guys were on the break, is I just went through and added snow removal to a bunch of customers. And you'll see the list when it pops up here. So again, as with anything, you're going to set your service you want to pull. In this case, snow removal, put your routes and so on and so forth. And then hit get invoices. And here's that list of people whose snow removal we pulled up. So let's go ahead and pull up this is a tester let's see here there we go all right there we go so again we'll take a look here we look at the snow removal service you'll see there's a one job there all right so we're going to go out there and now we're going to pull our work for the day so work once we get the list and again you can do your routing and all that stuff and like you normally would again i'm not going to go into too much detail because hopefully you guys know that by now or if you need help give us a call here or not us a call but give a call to real green and then um you know they can give you a crash course on routing if you really need it uh, again, yeah, it's up to you to decide if you want to do a driver's report or worksheet. We'll do a preview here real quick of both of those. A driver's report is going to show you the order of stops that are on that list, as well as it's going to give you information about the customer's account, um, as well as the price or the value of the job. Now, you may not want to actually show that production value for your crew. Again, it's up to you if you want to show that information or not. But if you don't, you may want to do something that's actually called a worksheet, which pretty much has the same information, but it does not have that value or that pricing information. Uh, so again, this is something that you would print out for your employee. All right, so we're going to close that, and so let's do it as a driver's report, because yeah, the driver's doing it work. So once you have your stops and all the stuff and everything you want, what you can do is go to print, and you're going to print now. Again, it's going to ask you, like the normal stuff you go through, who is going to be assigned to, what day you're planning to do it. So if you're pulling the work for today, we'll just set up for today's date, hit OK. And then I'm going to do a junk print, which I've shown in a couple other videos. Pretty much I'm printing to a file, so I'm not wasting my paper and ink. And I'm just going to call it junk in there. Some of the other things I was playing around with. Hit save. You replace it. Yes. Now, again, normally you'd send it to your printer. Now, you do want to make sure you mark the services as printed. Okay? And the reason for that is just so that way when you go to put in production and stuff like that, um, it'll be a dollar sign. Now, if you go out multiple times, um, you may kind of change the way you're doing the production entry. So, uh, again, there's, there is a little tool or utility that can show you that makes it a little bit quicker. Again, this is one of the things you have to be careful with because if you're not careful with it, you can do a lot of damage. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and mark services printed, assuming you're just going out once today. So we go ahead and mark services printed, hit yes. Again, um, you know, if they don't have scheduled dates or if the schedule date is different than the assigned date that you just assigned it, it's going to ask you if you want to overwrite. Again, you can hit yes. No, I'm just going to go ahead and hit yes for now. And now that work has been printed in that file. All right. So you're going to go out and do the work, do, 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 take the truck out to the field and all that stuff like that. And then let's go ahead and pull up our list here. 
Bum, 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 bum. Uh, where is that junk one that I just created? There it is. All right, let's see what the invoice number is. I seriously got to reset my database so I don't have such high invoice n or numbers here. Now, again, the reason uh, when I say invoice number, this is more of a temporary invoice number. This is not a permanent one because we had it set to statement only and we did not tell it to assign an invoice number at time of printing. Uh, but again, that's because we want to do what's called a monthly invoice. And I'll talk about monthly invoices here in a moment. Uh, but let's go ahead here. 305. 438W. So we're going to go in production 305 305438W because it's a worksheet, our drives reporter worksheet or whatever. And it throws the information in here. We're going to select the date we did the work. We actually did it today. Oh, actually, maybe I set up for yesterday. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so he's put it in there. Um, again, you can put your start time and stop time. If you're doing the manual pricing, it's going to populate and here it's going to say, hey, um, you know, if it's different than what the price is, going to, hey, do you want, you know, the man hour rate's different. Do you want to change the price or whatever? Or, re you know, put it to the recalculated price again. You can say yes or no. Uh, right now, I just, you know, set it at like 25 or 50 bucks for the service. All right, put all the information, hit save. As with anything, you're going through and you're building out a journal. So let's go ahead and pull that up again here. Let's take a look here. We have 50, I'm sorry, 305440. So three, 305440. Put that in there. Oh, you know what? 305440. W. There we go. Okay, so again, <laughs> that W is important. So um, again, we put the information in there, hit save. Now, once we have all our services and stuff in there, then we can turn around and post that work as being done. Again, I'm not going to print preview or export. Now, this is one way of doing it. You can actually go off that, that sheet and go through. Now, again, this is only if you go out there once. What I'm about to show you, you got to be careful with. Again, it's one of those things that if you mess it up, you can do some serious damage. We do have something that is called quick production entry. All right. Again, not a lot of people know about this, and again, it's very dangerous. It's definitely a dot your I's, cross your T's sort of utility. But what we can do is we can tell the system, I want to look for all those SR, those snow removal services, uh, boom, 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 there we go, that are in the printed status, that dollar sign status. And again, you can go off a schedule date, you can go off a print date, service year, and so on and so forth. Now, again, I have this set to no service year, so that way it's not tied to any particular service year, so it's either going to go off the schedule date or the, print, or the, the production date, or the done date. Uh, again, you can use flag codes and stuff, but what we're going to do is when you get all this information, you hit get invoices, it's going to throw those people on this list. All right. So if you didn't do someone, now again, these are the ones that we printed earlier, but if you didn't do one, you can actually uncheck that person and it won't be part of this, this uh, mass entry. But once we have all the information here, we can hit build journal, it's going to ask if you want to launch the production screen. When you click yes, it's going to take those services and throw them on the screen. If everything is exactly where you want it to be, then you just have to hit post. That's what's awesome about it. It's really quick. Bam! It's posted. You're good to go. But if you do something like man hour pricing or you do something like work order pricing or something because you did something very unique, you will want to make sure you fix the price and make sure that it needs to be where it is. All right? So again, it's just going to mass throw all those services up there. And then we hit post. Hit cancel, hit yes, and now all those services are now marked as being done. So if we go through and flip through some of these customers that I added, oh, go backwards a little bit here. There we go. Uh, bo -bo -bo -boom. Where are all those people that I had snow removal? Hold on. Do -do -do. Do -do. Oh, you know what? Let's do. Let's find someone here. Uh, reports, customer, customer list, but program job. Uh, bo -boom -boom -boom. Snow removal. And actually, let me kill this window here and then go to my SR service. There we go. So I'm looking for everyone that has the SR. Do preview. Make sure we got no data found. Oh, you know, oh, might help if I get the right branch here. Go create Ninja. Wah! There's those people. And then I'm going to export them out to the customer search screen. Because again, I'm, I'm just doing some shortcuts here to make it easier for me to show you things so we're not spending like five hours just finding a customer. Oh, really cool trick. Export to customer search screen makes life a lot easier for something. So, again, as I was saying is those people that had the snow removal, you'll see that that first one has been posted in production either because I did it through this here, using those numbers there, or I did that mass service, or the mass production entry, the quick production entry, sorry. So, again, you do have to be a little careful because, like I said, you can do some serious damage if you're not careful with that. But... As with always, double check your work before you actually hit that post button. Because once you hit that post button, it's in the customer screen. Now, a really cool thing, a really cool thing, because remember, 
I told the system, have it build out for the next day. But let's say you know you came out today and did it. What you can do is you can go back into, so let's say you went out a second time today, go back into quick production entry. Find everyone who has that scheduled date of the 16th. Okay. Let's see, do this here. But are in that Y status. When we hit get invoices, there's those people. All right. So again, we can uncheck the people we didn't do. And when we throw a build journal, it's going to throw in the production journal. And again, you make sure you have everything right before you hit this post button. But once you hit the post button, guess what? All those jobs are now posted again. Okay. So we just bam, bam, bam. Now if we do an F5 to refresh the screen, there we have two production in there. Okay. Again, as you'll see, it built it because it takes today's date adds one day to it and schedule for the next one. So let's say you went out there three times. Let's say you guys were hit with a terrible, terrible blizzard. Activity, quick production entry. Put in for, again, you can even leave today's date in here. Get invoices. There's those services. Again, make sure, please, please, please make sure you have the right people. Let's say you didn't do these three people here on the bottom. And then you could say, all right, build journal. And now you'll see those people don't show up on my list. They're not there. Okay. Once you have everything that is supposed to be done or that you guys did, hit post, and guess what? Now we've done three snow removal jobs on those customers we were looking at. So if you come back here, you'll see he only has two. But if we go back a little bit, or at least I thought I did. Did I go the wrong way? Son of a gun. Dang it. I should, should have closed that report. Let's run that report again here. Uh, customer list, program job. I don't have to worry about my settings. are already there. Okay, so go back here. So again, there's two... There's three, because again, we unchecked some of those customers. So again, you'll see really quick, bam, 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 just keep adding, or do that quick production entry, you can you know knock those out. Again, be careful. I, I can't stress well enough, be careful when using that quick production entry, because once you hit post on that production screen, you cannot delete the transactions. If you discovered that this person right here did not get that third snow removal for today, you're going to have to go and reverse production, or you could... Um, you know, give them an adjustment for the amount that was supposed to be done or whatever. Now, as I mentioned before, the reason why, the reason why you want to set the statement only and you're not assigning an invoice number at time of, of uh, printing is because when you're ready to go bill the person, you can go to invoices and monthly invoices. Now, the way the monthly invoices work is it's only going to find services that are set to statement only that does not have an invoice date yet. All right. So again, I'm going to pull all this information here. I'm going to hit get invoices. Here's those services that we did. If we do a preview of that, <laughs> you'll see there's only those snow removal jobs. Okay? So we take a look there. See, those are snow removal jobs. Now you'll see my date range, 3-1 to 331. So if I come up here and do statements, <laughs> and I'm going to build out a customer list here. So I'm, you're looking at the exact same people, 31755, and then 31774. 31789, 31792, 31792, 31793, 31, oops, 31794. Oh, no, I already put that one in there. Oh, no, it's an invalid count number. Oh, 31795, 31796, and 31798. 31796, and 31798. There we go. Oh, there was a spell. 31798. Or maybe I put it in there twice. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Okay, so as I was saying, um, let's do a statement. Now, you'll see here the statement dates are the exact same date range. All right? The Except for this last customer around here, the 31798, which um, I'm not sure why I didn't pull up, but pretty much the same customer list. If we take a look at a preview, oh, I don't want to, don't want to do open invoices. i got to take that as, as my default option here. But if we do a preview, all right, this is what a statement, but you'll notice on a statement, there was a payment made between the 1st and the 31st. Again, some commercial companies will not pay in a statement. So even though we have the exact same customers, exact same um, schedule dates and stuff like that, the statement is going to show all the transactions that fall between that date range. The monthly invoices only going to show those services that are set to statement only that do not have an invoice number yet. Now, once you print out the monthly invoice, it will be assigned an invoice number. Any of these snow removals that are on this service on this uh, invoice will then be given the invoice number 21. Or I'm sorry, 1257. Uh, oh my gosh, it's, it's Sunday. Come on, guys, give me, cut me some slack. It's uh, 125727. Okay. 
uh, one five one two five. Uh, I give up. Okay, but again, this invoice number is going to be the one that's going to be given for these two services. Now, what that means is, is the next time you go to print the invoice, those services won't show up. Why? Because they have an invoice number. Okay. Again, would it be nice if they had just like an option that says monthly invoice, and there's a little checkbox that once it's on a monthly invoice, it checks, and then it doesn't. Yeah, but eh, I'm not a programmer. I just get paid. <laughs> just get paid to do tech support questions. But I'm not getting paid for these videos. So the whole point I'm trying to say is, is in order to do a monthly invoice, it has to be statement only and it ha cannot have an invoice number yet. If you need to though, you can reprint and you will select what the invoice number is. All right. So again, if you print these out and whatever, um, you can you can still reprint them. All right. Now, as I said before, when you go through and if you're doing a uh, you know customer where they're paying, oh, I just realized my installments are off. Let me turn those back on. Miscellaneous. Edit. Uncheck and no, there we go. Close that. Yeah, I did another video about parameters. And I was talking about things. And I was showing people how that worked. Okay, so as I was saying, if you have a customer that you're going to go through and set them up so that the snow removal is on a payment plan, you're going to set them up with an installment. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole, you know, how blue about putting the installments here, but all installments are pretty much in a nutshell. This is, you know, saying we're going to charge them based off a of schedule here as opposed to, um, you know, charging them at time of service or charging them for the services themselves. So um, we're, at, we're at 20 minutes here. I'll go ahead and cut the short because I think I pretty much got covered everything as far as snow removal. Um, you know, and then, um, you know, once you're done, uh, let's see here. Yep, I think that's it. Yeah, so, okay. Um so again, you want you'll definitely want to have an end on date here because once it hits that end on date, it just won't schedule anymore out, and uh, you should be good to go. So of course, if you have any questions or whatever, give a call to Real Green. We should be able to help you out. Again, I'm hoping at least this video gives you a good idea of how to set up snow removal. You have yourself a wonderful.